We got to pop the trunk. Jalen, <laughs> we got to give the people. The NBA is back. What do we give them, though? Give the people what they want. The NBA is back, Jalen. The NBA is back. We're taping this on Thursday afternoon. In about an hour and a half, LeBron James is going to take the floor in Cleveland against the Knicks. It's just so good to hear those shoes squeaking again and just to see the guys playing that sport that we love. And I'm so excited for the youngsters who haven't seen the television show, Martin. I want to call this the Bra Man Podcast. <laughs> The way I look, the way I'm dressed, the way I'm going to go watch LeBron <laughs> James play basketball in his return to Cleveland. You know, schedules get in the way sometimes, and today's been a hectic Sometimes day. you wear a tuxedo, and, and sometimes you just wear house trunk. shoes. You do not get the Jesus piece today. No. You do not get the suited and booted, no YMCMB hoodie, no JRLA zip up, strictly black shirt, black shorts, and the bat. Yeah, you look like you're going to go rob somebody. <laughs> <laughs> so not only did we get the start of the NBA season and, and the debuts of a lot of rookies and some great performances so far, but we had our very first hold me back moment. I loved it so much. Dwight and Kobe ha, 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 ha. had been chirping before the game. You know how somebody's about to sneeze? Sneak each other. When you played 13 years in the NBA, it sounds like, ha, 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 ha. home. <laughs> Me back. <laughs> and we did have a major development with a first ballot Hall of Famer in his 19th year mm -hmm. and a gentleman that's two times his size. And you probably would not be wanting to have a physical altercation with a guy mm. that's physically two times your size. That geometry normally doesn't work. And that's why I carry the bat <laughs> for all those that ask. This was a very NBA-ish type of exchange. First of all, <laughs> why is Kobe even trying to get the ball from him in the first place? I feel like I do it because I do that during pickup. I think it's because he's too lazy to run back on defense. That's what it is. That's the only reason you're pestering somebody in the backcourt. But when you watch that play, look at the score. That I'm going to continue to stress that yeah. all year. Yeah. Seven minutes to go. One team is ahead 25. It's not the Lakers. That's the team that's possessing the ball with their best rebounder looking to fast break and go the other way after one other team, that's the home team, missed a shot. Mm -hmm. And by the way, like you said, who instigated the altercation? One gentleman could have got the rebound while the other gentleman just sprinted back on defense. Let's, you know what we should do? This is going to be an interactive pod okay. today. We got a bunch of questions from Twitter. Okay. Let's just take a look at the first one. This is from Jake Wanamaker. What up, Jake? What up, Dow? It looked like Kobe was saying, try me to Dwight after that little scuffle. What were they talking about? B Town. Let's take a let's just take a look. Let's take a look. Let's go to the footage here on this one. <laughs> All right. Oh, trying to get the ball. There's, there's so Kobe. Like right now, can you pause it? Hold on, Kobe go back. Go back. Okay. Oh, you want me to go back? Yes. We okay. Gotta, we're okay. Have we can go back. Oh, this right is right okay, okay, let's, let's go to film. Did you let's want to put me to work? Here we go. All right, freeze it. Like Dick Vitale. Uh-huh. There you go. All right. Now these two gentlemen. One is a center. Yep. One is a shooting guard. Everybody's yep. hustling back on D. The official on the baseline, I just want to paint the scenario for everybody. It's probably a 50-year-old-plus gentleman. Uh-huh. And the guy that's asking for the outlet pass, he's the smallest guy on the court. Patrick Beverly. Just quickly let it Five run and then pause it. Pause it. Uh-huh. Now, at this point, Kobe has already been elbowed. Yes, he has. Right? It's he gets hit. He gets elbowed in the jaw pretty good. Okay. Now let it go a little bit and pause it. Pause it. Now, if he wanted to retaliate, there's a clean shot to the left side of that guy's oh, face. Oh, for sure. Oh, that's not. That's never in question. That you can throw with your right hand. Yeah, he has like a good two-second window here if he really wanted to do something. And you got on the arm sleeve and everything to keep it warm. Pretty sure you got some icy hot underneath yeah. that thing. Yeah. Okay, oh, pause no, it again. No one's there. No one's there still. Okay, now uh, once again. Mm -hmm. No one has intervened. Let's, and you don't even say, like, because you know how the NBA works. Like, you're not necessarily <laughs> going to throw a punch because then you're going to be out for games. You get fined a lot of money. But you certainly could have pushed. You certainly could have mushed. Or you could have just gone with the nose-to-nose. -nose, I'm not going to get fined for this. Might not even get a tech nose-to-nose -nose kind of stare down. Or you could have certainly just 
Oh, you got me. All right, I'm gonna get you next time. Yeah, you had a lot of that opportunity have, for a lot of different you, things. By the way, in basketball, you're gonna get elbowed. That that actually happens sometimes intentionally, sometimes unintentionally. But this is what you talk to young players about. See, a lot of times when you talk about the discipline it takes between the guy that's on the team in high school versus the guy that has all of the talent walking through the halls. It's the guy listens to a coach. He goes to practice. He plays by the rules. He deals with adversity. This is an adverse situation for number 24. <laughs> it's not uh, that deep, Jalen. It is. Pause it. <laughs> Let it run for a second and pause it again. Elbow. Pause it again. All right, so now Patrick Beverly's on the scene. This is what makes it an adverse situation for number 24. You're in front of the other team's bench. Mm -hmm. It's two to one. Mm -hmm. The guy in the gray shirt is not going to help you at all. No, no. But what makes this a dilemma is where are the purple jerseys? They're, well, they're wearing yellow this evening. The gold jerseys. Aren't, oh, they're the they're running back on defense the like they're supposed to. Man, don't, don't miss words. They're wearing purple they're wearing, and gold they're jerseys. They're wearing gold jerseys, okay, the man. Guys in, but in they're the running jersey. back on defense like they're supposed to. I think this is all because Kobe is old and he doesn't want to run back on defense. David Jacoby. When the official blows the whistle in basketball, mm. watch what everybody does. They look. One guy may have a continuation. He's trying to shoot. Another guy may be trying to finish the foul. But other than that, you stop when you hear the whistle. Yes. Okay. They're stopped running back on defense. Let it run a little again, please. Right, let's see what's happening. Kobe, what's Pause defending? it more. Okay. Okay. Finally, someone arrives on the okay. scene here. So, so, so let's watch what That's kind of guy he's bringing a knife to a gunfight with. <laughs> is that Ed That's Davis? Right. Okay. Yeah, now, yeah. what is he really doing? Uh, Ed Davis is doing nothing. He's just just making his presence known. Okay. You know what I mean? He's just around to support. So, but now notice that with one hand on Kobe's stomach, somehow the referee has managed to move him about eight feet backwards. Correct. Now, again, as J David just alluded, this is by no means to provoke fighting in any way, shape, or form, on, off. We're not condoning any violence. What we are saying is NBA players are as smart as they come. And the discipline I just talked about, never as a trademan, a tradesman, Damage your tools. Sure. If I punch you, I'm messing up one of my digits. Yeah. I mess up one of my digits, I mess up my money. That's not good business. Mm -mm. He gets paid $24 million, $24 million to shoot that basketball with his right hand. He doesn't want to mess it up? This is a business decision. Thus, ha, ha, hold me so he's getting held back. And then in some words, remember Jake's question about the try me thing? Pause it one more time. Okay. What is Davis doing? Nothing. He's just standing there. So right now, is he like aggressively going after Dwight, protecting his superstar? No. But he's also not really like, Kobe, you good? What happened? What's going on? Like, you ready to ride? Now, by no means do I need the guy to come be Steven Jackson to Ron Artest. No. But. For those that say um, Dwight Howard is soft, okay? Yeah. I've never seen him get two-pieced in the face. I have seen that happen to Chris play. Childs gave it to him in the middle okay. of a play. Right? That's one of Chris Childs' best plays in the NBA. <laughs> so here's the thing. It's like this. Is, I'm going to say that it's not that big a deal. This is a big nothing. You know what I mean? That's why you can't really blame Ed Davis for doing something wrong. This is a nothing. This has got so nothing written all over it. And so he we, said, I know you, dog. And uh -huh. Kobe was saying, I know you. And what does Kobe say here? That's the answer, Jake's question. Yeah. That's what he was saying. <laughs> Kobe. Kobe listens to the dash. That's basically what happened. We know it was Kobe. Kobe contributed to the, to the D. I told you he said some shoes to JRLA. Oh, he did? I'm pretty sure he knows about that, that record. That's about to be a number one record. The Lakers look bad. It, it, I mean, we obviously pour some out for Julius Randle and his yes, season. For real. His season. Insane. Get better. Get better, Julius Randle. I love to read that Harden and Ariza visited, visited him at the hospital. And Paul George, too. Yeah, of course. Now, it's, it's too bad to see Randall go down. But one thing, but even before that, it was just the Lakers looked bad. They looked bad, James. This is a perfect opportunity 
for me to become the media version of KRS One. Okay. The teacher. Okay. So many times in team sports, we relegate the championship to one individual. Mm -hmm. And so when you talk about Kobe Bryant, you're going to say, he got five chips. Mm -hmm. You don't take into account that, fortunately for him, he's a terrific player. He's a Hall of Fame player, which there's been a lot of those. Okay? Carl Malone, John Stockton, Charles Barkley, Reggie Miller, George Gervin. Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson. The list goes on and on sure. of great players. The difference in those guys and Kobe Bryant is they got a chance to play a bulk of their career for the Lakers. An organization that won championships before him mm -hmm. with Showtime Lakers and Pat Riley and even before them with the logo, Jerry West, etc. What makes this a teachable moment is the word team gets lost today. When you watch the Spurs on open tonight, there's a reason why you saw the owner get a ring, the GM get a ring. I didn't realize how many people got rings. Coach get a ring. Everybody gets rings. All of the people who are doing the administrative the staff, administrative the sales stuff. staff, everybody gets a ring. Now, when you play for the Lakers, you get a chance to play for Pat Riley if you get drafted in the 80s. Mm. Now, to show the greatness of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and Magic Johnson, Kareem in Milwaukee, Magic in L.A., they won championships before they even played for Pat Riley as a head coach. Mm -hmm. Once he became a head coach, they won four together. Pat validated himself going to New York, making him a playoff team, but really validated himself by going to Miami and getting three more championships. Now let's rewind the tape. Phil Jackson. Championships in Chicago, six of them, Mike and Scotty. Yep. He validated himself again by Three more going rings. to L.A., showing that he can win without those guys, and I'm going to win with Shaq and Kobe. The difference between Shaq and Kobe and Magic and Kareem, and I'm going to add with Shaq and Kobe, LeBron, Dwayne Wade, also future Hall of Fame players, they haven't won without Phil. They haven't won without Riley. It shows when I talk about the all-time great marionettes that have graced the NBA. If you got a chance to play for those two dudes, it's a good chance you got some chips. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at the Laker roster. I'm looking on the sideline. They're not going to win a chip. I'm a, I'm a bold statement. They're not going to win a chip. And so... When you talk sports, remember, and there's a debate when you go into the year of list. Best small forward, best power forward, best point guard. You can't tell me if you don't switch CP3 and Tony Parker for the NBA Finals that the Spurs wouldn't still win. They'd still win. Probably would, yeah. They'd win probably even bigger. Sure. Chris Paul had the second best player efficiency rate in the whole league last year behind LeBron James. I remember being in high school, and this is actually how I learned this, the difference between best player versus best team. Mm -hmm. Because now that water has gotten diluted. Playing against Chris Webber, the number one player in the country. We beat their team, myself, Howard Ozzie, Voshan Leonard, because we were a better team. After the game, he still was the best player. Sure. And so when you talk about your favorite athlete, your favorite Yankee, remember, if Barry Bonds was playing left field, he'd have got a ring. Dallas Cowboys, Barry Sanders, he would have got a ring. Kobe's not surrounded by greatness. Therefore, he can't elevate those around him, Shaq, Gasol, push the right buttons, and now put them in a position to win. He had 31 points last night. Did they still lose by 30? Yes. So this brings us to our next question from our fans. Give the people what they want. We listen to the people and give them what they want. Here's the next question. This is from Marty J. Will Kobe leave the Lakers at some point? Yes. 
Definitive yes. Where's he going? How's oh, it going? Oh, wait a minute. Work? I didn't hesitate, did I? No, you didn't. How's it work? Talk to me about it. How it works is a guy that just scored 31 points last night is not going to be done after next year unless he wants to be. He'll be a free agent. After next year, where's he going to go? How's that work? I mean, Phil I mean, Jackson, who's he knows gonna clear, pretty well, right? Who's going to clear that much room for Kobe Bryant? See, that, that's why I bring in the team aspect. Because when Phil brings you in the office mm -hmm. and he puts his 11 Can I be, on I'll, the table. I'll be Kobe Bryant. You be Phil. Okay. Hey, Phil. Good to see you. Good to see you. How, how you doing? You been polishing I, off them I'm rings? Just polishing the rings yeah. that you gave me and reading all the books that you gave me yeah. and doing yoga and stuff. Okay, good. So you put your five rings on the table. Good to see you. All mm -hmm. of that. Okay, let me get, let me get all 11 of mine. Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, you want to come to New York? Yes. You want to win? Yes. Okay. We need you to take a significant pay cut. No. And we need you to ride off into the sunset. I'm going to make sure they take care of you off the court. You'll never have to buy a meal in this town. You're going to be good. You want to win a championship? I want to put you with Melo. Melo's the number one guy at this point in your career. And potentially, I'm going to sign Marc Gasol. Nobody else knows this, but I'm going to get him too. Powell's brother? Yeah, I got a relationship That with just him. means I'm going to take a bigger pay cut, though, Phil. I'm going to say, I'm going to get him, too. <laughs> so, <laughs> what kind of a pay cut so, are we talking? So, I, so, so the three guys I have in mind to lead us right now is you, Col you Carmelo, and Mark Gasol. What about Rondo? Why would you trade for him two years ago? And he'd be like, cool. To prove a point to everybody else that he wouldn't keep getting them checks these last two years, he may mess around and play for them for free. You might be like, I'm <laughs> donating this year's salary to charity. That's how that goes. Did you see what happened <laughs> in Charlotte last night? Let's talk a little bit about Michael Jordan, right? Because he's... Time I dreamed that his way. He's been a little quiet. You know what I mean? At first, he was a little quiet about... I could be um, like... You know, my... lately, when he started owning the, hor the Hornets, and there was Gina a podcast, and good they weren't the that good. Died, did he? Yeah, it's just kind of... It was a little weird. He's a little quiet, but then... Michael Jordan is popping up everywhere lately. Did you see what happened last night in the in the in the hive? I did. What'd you think? I was happy to see Lance flirt with a triple double. Mm -hmm. Kimba Walker has been clutch since college. Yeah, we all know that. And but I gotta say one thing. This is where you draw the line. There are a lot of guys that are clutch in college. Mm -hmm. Okay. He's playing four games and five nights these days. Mm -hmm. and he's still bringing it. Yeah. So I like – he's become, in my head, the new Ben Gordon. He reminds me of that, his flow and how he played. He wasn't really a prototypical starting guard, wasn't really a shooting guard, mm -hmm. but he didn't get his own shot. And he was a clutch player. He gets a lot of his own shot, and he takes it. Lance's performance, eh, I think he was 3 for 12, 7 points, got to the line once. I think he had 13 boards and 8 assists. He did Lancey kind of things, got one big dunk, but 3 for 12 isn't a great night from the field. That's what you're going to see from Lance, though, him flirting with a triple-double is mm -hmm. the thing. Yeah, he's 3 points and 2 rebounds away from a triple-double. You can't complain that much about it. That's, that's what that – and they won. Yeah. Al Jefferson is still the anchor, and I don't care if – Darren Williams is on the perimeter in Utah, or Al is down low and Lance is on the perimeter, he's going to stand on that left block, and he ain't moving. And the thing about it is the entry pass to Al, <laughs> and just like, I, if, I just start running back on defense. You know what I mean? Like, you know he's going to shoot, and you know it's going in. He's, he's really got that together. Now they go to overtime. Kemba hits a big shot to send him there. And then Kemba hits the big winner. Now guess who's fired up? Let's look at Michael Jeffrey Jordan's reaction. Take a look. Oh, shot goes up. There's he is in the black. Ah, he loses it. <laughs> loses it. <laughs> loses it. What do you What do you think about Jordan lately? Well, first off, what I think of that picture right there, I guess that goes with what I think about Jordan. And this is a compliment. That picture reminds me of the movie Life. That's Rayford Gibbs and Claude Banks. It's Eddie Murphy. Martin Lawrence. Okay. That's what that reminds me of. Retirement. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the That's golf right. course. It's like a country club. Yes. You know what I mean? It looks like uh, stated. It looks like you could, like there, there's a big gate outside of this place. And you need to show your identification on the way in. Or nope. in his case, you pull up and they open the gate and no they say, "How are you, Mr. It. Jordan? Good no to see you again." No question about it. The only people that have been there, security already knows. Yeah. They already knows they're coming. <laughs> Exactly. This looks like a like a golf a golf place. That right? looks like success. So you know that's a Mad Rashad and, and and Jordan. There's surely some, some there's some cigars off camera. Jordan obviously doesn't care what he looks like because you know he dresses like that. But they were discussing golf and let's just let's just give a listen to what they were saying. <laughs> Any people, all people, right? All people. Artie, Artie, Palmer. This is who we would play golf with. I never played with Obama, but I would. But no, nah, that's okay. I take him out. He's a hack. Man, I'd be all day playing with him. Do you really uh, want to say that? Yeah. The President of the United States. Don't worry is a about hack? it. I never said he wasn't a great politician. I'm just saying he's a. <laughs> no, he's not. A <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Michael Jordan's just going on wax. Like, I've never played with him, but he's a bad golfer. Well, first off, it's it's a little call out that he could easily get in Obama's pockets if Obama <laughs> want to challenge him. Don't fall for the bait, Barack. Number one, that's a vet move. I appreciate that, MJ. The the second thing is he found other things besides basketball that took his time and took his competitive spirit and allowed him to continue to expand on it. Gambling. Gambling. <laughs> Gambling. And playing golf. Gambling on golf. So he never had to lose the painter hat and the hoop earring. Like we all he's still looking at it. Hearing. Like wow, he he's he's still doing he's it. He's like, I'm gonna own this. But this is coming back around, and I will be right here with my hoop earring on. And in preseason, I saw LeBron trying to own the '80s Michael Jordan choker chains yeah. in practice. <laughs> so MJ is just owning it. Still Hence, doing it. I'm tying the knot. If this was TV, it'd be a transition to the powder toss Nike. It's LeBron back. James. unveiling this huge That's what they have in common in to the old MJ poster. That's just him turning backwards. Exactly. What do you think? What do you think about this gigantic banner in downtown? I mean, that, he's winning. What is like Charlie Sheen voice? Winning. <laughs> that, that, that's all that is, uh, and rightfully so. If it said believe Lind, uh, do you believe Lind? I'm uh, going to the Windy City if I have to pick right now. Oh, really? Because the yes. next question from Matt Wagner is, which team had the best opening night performance? Who surprised you the most? Best opening night performance as a team? So far, remember, it's Thursday afternoon if you're listening to this on Friday. Yes, yeah, only been a handful of games. Here's played. my answer. Pelicans. The Pelicans front court. Anthony Davis. We all know. Like, it's not, it's not a secret anymore that he's the next superstar. But Omar Asik, a Seek, he did his thing. The two of them combined for 40 points, 34 rebounds, and 14 blocks. They're going to continue to do that all season. The issue for their team, they have like six really productive NBA players that I like. Mm -hmm. Drew Holiday, Gordon, Evans, Brian Anderson, yep. Stretch for and Asik is going to be double-double. Terrible free throw shooter. He might as well shoot him with his feet. Ter terrible free throw shooter. Yeah, but he gets buckets. But that's going to hurt them the last handful of minutes. We're talking about winning games. I don't games even know now. if he's in. And it, it, I just go Anderson Austin Davis. Austin Rivers with the Clippers yet? But anyway, <laughs> so <laughs> my point is, while they're a really good emerging team, mm -hmm. they're in the West. And because of that, you could go down the litany of squads that have two legitimate All-Stars. This team has one. The Thunder have two legitimate all-stars, but only one is playing. Westbrook last night just put the team on his back and did everything as good. They end up still losing to the Blazers. But what, what do you take away from Westbrook's performance? How he gets his points is going to be different from KD. Mm -hmm. He's not going to be as efficient because who can shoot as good as Kevin Durant? No one. He's not going to make as many threes but who, because Kevin Durant has led the league in scoring four times and is, is the reigning MVP. So because of that basic geometry – KD shoots a lot of his shots facing or going toward the rim. Well, Russell Westbrook, if you want him to be more efficient, it's going to be more side pick and roll for a pull-up jumper, which he stops on the dime with the best of them. A post-up when he's going against Damian Lillard, who he outscored 26-0 in the first half of that game against Portland. Mm -hmm. And what that does 
is now all of a sudden people like Serge Ibaka, who was taking the 17, 18-foot winger baseline jumper, is now taking top of the key threes. So he shot a couple. I saw him make he hit one. one. He hit one. But what they are going to have to do is realign how they run their offense. But I give Scott Books and Sam Presti credit because they've continued to rebuild their roster around two terrific players and yet still have success. And the way they paid Portland while they did lose, it did show me when they're going against average or below average teams, they will be really competitive and win those games. But the second thing it showed me is my theory. They got one all-star playing right now. I see them the lower half of the playoff race yep. until KD returns. For sure. It's just it's just too much Sebastian Telfair. You know what I mean? It's just too much, especially with the guys that have injured. Reggie Jackson helps them a lot. Sometimes I wish I was from New York because you guys, <laughs> what? y'all hype y'all I said own. there's too much of him. Sebastian Telfair had a documentary. <laughs> yes, it's through the fire. Shout out to John Hawk. <laughs> so the next question from Twitter, I love this one. I had, you know I had to put this one up, Steve Fox. If you were back in the league this season, who would you want to run with, Jalen Rose? Who would I'm going to leave Detroit Pistons with? out of this. Of, yeah, of course. Of course. Okay, they get a mulligan. If, yep. The true answer to that question. Stan Van's like three games away from calling you. The, two, the, 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 the true answer to this question, we have the entire JRLA family at the game. <laughs> Students and everything. That's the true answer to this question. Okay. But if not from Detroit, if not for Detroit, and I love their owner, Tom Gores and Stan Van Gundy, It'd be the Clippers. Because you can just stand there and get, get shots. And I want to be in L.A. Work. Yeah, you don't want to work. And we had a new owner. He just got money to blow. No, I'm <laughs> like, let me get a new computer. <laughs> Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is when, when I asked this question, I really thought that we'd start talking about, like, who you would compliment team-wise and this and that. And you went straight with, well, we go to Detroit because I can have fun there. Oh, we go to L.A. because we, I can have fun there. And, and I want a new computer from the owner. You know why? Because... When you look at the podium after the game, it's mm -hmm. going to be CP3, it's going to be Blake Griffin, it's going to be DeAndre Jordan, it's going to be Jamal Crawford, it's going to be Doc Rivers. I'm going to be in the shower yep. going to find a quality sushi restaurant and have sake. Shout to Sugarfish. <laughs> <laughs> Next one, this one is from Jackson Beatler. Favorite teammate you ever played with for off-the-court reasons? Answer, but don't get fired. Now, don't I, hurt any feelings, okay? This I have is just two. one of. I have, I have a few. Exactly. <laughs> I know no, you. You don't want to hurt any feelings. So I'm just going to think by team. When I got to Denver, it was Rodney Rogers. Oh. I love that guy. He's dealing with a health issue. I wish you well. I love this family. He used to have me over for dinner. He was a really good teammate. Um, Indiana... Travis Best, Dale Davis. Springfield Zone. Antonio Davis, Reggie, Mark. <laughs> yeah. This is for off the court reasons. You can't name the whole roster. That's what maybe that's why we were a winning team. Y'all would roll deep. You'd be the guys at the club and be like, yeah, uh, they'd be like, oh, so what's going on tonight? Be like, oh, 10 guys. Like, all right, you have to buy 50 bottles. Then. All I know is that we had no problem sharing stacks of ones. <laughs> <laughs> we had. There, there was no problem finding them. No. Okay. I promise you. Okay, okay. And when you're on good teams, people do their thing. Some people like to play poker. Some people like to play cards. Some people like to shoot dice. Mm -hmm. You know, it creates camaraderie, and it's fun. We do a lot of traveling on planes, on buses. Chicago, I was the old head, so I kind of had to move like an OG. I did have a party for my team. So if I move like an OG, you basically mean I wouldn't tell other guys in the team what I was doing. No, it means if I go in there and I see them, that means I'm in the wrong place. Okay. <laughs> That's what that means. Like, oh, Eddie Curry's here? <laughs> Tyson, Tyson Chandler's here? Oh, I got to be in a better party than I this. Mean, I, yeah. I mean, if, I, if I'm going to the same party as them. You just said two guys that came out of high school. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm a seasoned veteran at this uh, time. Okay? That's just all bad. But I did do something that was fun that night, but... We regretted it the next day. And you could Google the don't, score. Don't get fired. I'm just going to tell you this. When I got traded to Chicago, I still had my house in Indiana. And when we went back to play the Pacers, I had a team party at my house. And then the next day? The next day, I think we were down 30 at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> was this the house with the newspaper over the windows? No, it wasn't that one. <laughs> it, it was the house where I was DJing. 
I was. How many human beings were there? I was. How about take this? me there, Jalen? Take me there. I mean, it was about forty human beings there. Okay. And uh, how many of those human beings were male? Thirty percent. Okay. Thirty percent of forty of twelve. And so, <laughs> I got math. I got math. <laughs> and so it was one of those parties where I'm hosting, I'm DJing, I'm bartending, I'm catering. Yeah, great host. Very generous human being. Yes. I'm providing security. <laughs> everything. You know what that means, but I don't want to. Okay. So it was it was one of those things. Okay. Okay. When I got to Toronto. Wait, no, how long does this party last? Oh, this party lasts. Uh, How many human beings slept at your house that night? Well, human beings were slept sleep every three hours after they got there. So it's <laughs> it's th this when you woke up the this next is, day. This was what, what what someone would call a work day. Okay. This this took eight hours. Okay. <laughs> this is a full day. Full day's work. <laughs> yeah. All right. Exactly. It just wasn't from eight what to day four. Was, or what nine time to five. was the game the next day? Oh, the game wasn't until nighttime. It was a seven p.m. game. That's the difference between being the veteran mm. returning home and having the young team who was probably still thinking about the night before yeah. or still feeling the effects yeah. of the night before or probably still enjoying the introductions from the night before. <laughs> what do you mean by that, Jalen? Don't get fired. <laughs> okay. 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 So we go to Toronto. Uh -huh. Fortunately for me, a couple of people that I played with in Chicago also got traded to, with me into Toronto. So I like to hang with Danielle Marshall. Mm -hmm. I like to hang with Roger Mason, Vince Carter. Morris Peterson is my little brother, literally. So that goes beyond sports. That's my little brother. So obviously I loved hanging with him. Um... When I got to New York, I didn't have to have a favorite teammate to hang with. Because it's New York. No, because we were all out. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, is this practice or is this? Because <laughs> the whole team is here. I'm like, okay. <laughs> is this one in the morning or one in the afternoon? <laughs> and you know, and why you take a nap before you go out? So Obviously. that was fun. In Phoenix, I was old and washed up. Yeah, yes, it's over. You're retired. I was thinking about you're, my you're, next. You career. were keep getting them checks, guy. <laughs> so you were making like thirteen million dollars a year at that point. I was just like, we should have done that. We should have done the the the, uh, the dollars per point on you for that season. But you know what? <laughs> you couldn't. Here's why. Because I got bought out by the Knicks. Oh right. I went to Phoenix on a minimum contract. Mm -hmm. I was just trying to get a ring. How'd that go? See, I tried to be, I'm about to yeah. be Mitch Richmond in LA. Yeah, you try to get that car on. I got to see Gary Payton in Miami. <laughs> about to sneak and get me one. Ah. How'd that go? Ah, not so well. Not so, not so well. <laughs> Let's look My at this. My backside one. still hurt, not sat so long. Can the Nuggets be successful running what seems to be a 14 man rotation? Uh, in a word, no. no. Okay, let's go, to, let's go to the next one then. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen once mentioned that someone attempted to assassinate him. Can we hear the story? Don't tell you it, Jalen. You can hear the story, but not today. Not we right now. Come back to it. I have heard this one. It is going to be the best episode of Storytime with Jalen Rose yes. in the history of the franchise. Yes. And you know what they always say about stories like this? Save it for the book. Yep. Save it for the book. Let's see the next one. This one's from G. Does Warrior signing of Steve Kerr instantly make them a serious title contenders because of Spurs-like offense they will run? Uh, in a word, uh... No. no. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. But they will be really excited with Steph Curry. Always. And Klay Thompson, they're the best, as we clarified on this podcast, they're the best starting backcourt in the NBA because the best backcourt in the NBA is in San Antonio. Do it, do it for him, Jalen. I know what you want to say. Both players had over 20 points in do the, the opening first game. Thing, Jalen. Do it. Tony Parker, Manu Ginobili, and their soundtrack as the Miami Five, Heat was walking off the four, floor still rings in my three, head. And all they said, two, gals, bars, <laughs> yeah. I don't know where that came And I'm from. like, yeah, go. <laughs> go home. Like, I'm a believer. <laughs> so, again, I like Golden State. They're exciting, but injuries is always their issue. David Lee missed the first game of the year. Mm-hmm. 
This is from Tito. When a player gets hurt, who picks the doctor or surgeon? Team, player, a combination of the two. It's a good question. I think Julius Randle just got hurt. So who does pick the doctor? In the That's surgery? a terrific question. The team. No. Because they're paying you. And when you get injured, a lot of time it's during the action. And who's there to care for you? The but team doctor. Isn't that a physician. collaboration between the player and their reps and the team? It's a 1,000% collaboration because we are paying David Jacoby millions of dollars to play football, basketball, baseball, whatever. So we want to know your condition before your family does. Put that phone down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. We'll text your wife or your family, let them know you're good. But you get up on this MRI machine, this, that's what we need you to do. Mm. Now, what you're allowed to do is get second, third, fourth, fifth opinions, but the team is overseeing that. Hmm. When Tony Romo gets injured during the Dallas game, he ain't have an outside – I need an outside opinion. I just got surgery on my back. Who he have? He had the owner with a headset come down to the field <laughs> and was like, Romo's ready. <laughs> and for those that feel like – that's normal. He's the owner. He can do that. Yeah, he can do that. But that's why Jimmy Johnson isn't in the ring of honor, but yet they won three chips together. Because somebody that's a true head coach, that's a leader, that's an established person that has a pedigree, they're not going to be subjected to that type of behavior. That's why only one team in the NFL does that. How about them ball? How about them Cowboys? Cowboys look good. <laughs> Jalen Rose has been a Lego and a calling card. Look at that right there. You are a sprint calling card, but look at – you only get one minute, it says. It says one minute. You got a one minute with that. I, I, Do you even remember this? Well, I, I've, I've been in some, uh, some one-minute situations. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure. So let's take a look at that picture. Oh, you're wearing a Michigan. That means you never got paid for that, huh? Not a dime. Not a dime for that, huh? You would, that's well, interesting. Well, let's just go from head to toe. I mean, if you if you want to play it like that, I mean, for the jersey, I ain't get a dime. No. What about okay. the black socks with hold the on, Nike swoosh? Hold on, you forgetting. What about if if we came out in the era where there was a King James trademarked or a Johnny Football trademark? Imagine if we could have trademarked long shorts or black socks. I think the lawyers would take issue with that. You know what I mean? You didn't invent black we socks. I to do it. <laughs> sure, sure, All sure. I know is I went to go buy five pairs of black socks, and I ended up wearing some dress socks. So. Okay. And we weren't even rocking the black on black shit. Why weren't we you were saving yet? them for the big game. But those are Hirachis, aren't they? Those look good. Shout out to a little preseason action. Shout out to you, And Jim. I got zero for the calling card. Sprint. Yeah, Sprint. One you minute. checks. Uh, now this is on eBay. We're going to buy it. All right. <laughs> this is the last one right here, Jalen. This is from Diego Rufino. What do you think of the King's owner, Vivek Randive, Randive, I don't know how to say it, idea to play four on five on defense? And Okay. Now, I didn't think this was real. I really didn't. So then I went ahead. And I was like, I Googled it. He really said this, that they should have like a four and five and have one guard cherry pick. And he's thinking about trying this. What do you think about that? Really smart, successful individual. Stupid idea. For me, it's like, uh, thank you very much. I really appreciate your input. But um, we've tried that. And this is the National Basketball Association. <laughs> this isn't junior this varsity. This is why when yeah. Jimmy Johnson comes into office and says, we're going to trade Herschel Walker. And Jerry Jones says, he's the best running back in the league. We can't trade that horse. I just bought this team. We're going to trade Herschel Walker. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's one of those decisions. Yeah. You can do that in fourth grade when only one person can make a layup. Or you could probably do it even in high school when two people can't make an open jump shot. You can't do that in college, and you certainly can't do it in the pro. It's not going to work. No. It just, one of the things is, like, is they, should, they shouldn't let this story get out. That's the thing. It's kind of like maybe he made the suggestion, but who told the media? Or Someone who didn't want Vivek to look very good is what it sounds like to me. Agreed. And so 
that could be one of 29 other people that own teams. Like, whew, we need him to keep a team. <laughs> Where's Donald this? Sterling he when we need him? He should buy another team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't he buy the Bucks too? <laughs> Let's have everybody doing this. <laughs> now, before we go, you do have a baseball bat over your shoulder, and we do need to recognize the World Series champion, three of the last five San Francisco Giants. I actually started rooting for the Giants for a couple of reasons. One, there was a large craze when the Oakland A's came out and how their system and Billy Bean was all about money ball. Money ball. Yes, this is going to be the way. It's going to revolutionize it. We're going to use metrics and we're going to cut our salary cap and we're going to make sure that we can win with the cheapest team in the major leagues. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to start rooting for their rival. <laughs> you want players to get paid. <laughs> they don't have a salary cap in baseball. Why are you trying to nickel and dime? Have you seen the Dodgers you roster? You sound like a professional athlete right now. Have you seen the Dodgers roster? Everybody's Matt on Kemp it. Matt Kemp get 175. <laughs> yeah. They used him as the fourth outfielder. Magic's going to be back on countdown. He needs the money. <laughs> <laughs> and so ever since then, I've rooted for the Giants and their movement. And uh, just you know, pitch five innings. It, Sandoval's it, on base all the time. One thing I liked about this World Series, both from both the Royals and the Giants, and I did catch at least you know three, four or five of the games, is it wasn't it wasn't just get on base and have somebody hit a home run. It was just single after single and and moving guys along and and bunting and and, and tagging up on on plays that sometimes you don't tag up on and and just getting runs the old fashioned way. And, I and, and if you're one of the people that thinks that when the ninth inning happens and you hit a possible single and the center field bobbles it. And then it goes to the wall, and you get to second. And then a left fielder bobbles it, and you round second. If you want to the storyline, because <laughs> yeah. there's a certain replay that you watch that the, the second baseman shortstop catches the ball and has it in his hand when homeboy gets to third. <laughs> Correct. So, You're a toast. Yeah, so it's basically trying to steal home without a lead is, is, is what they're trying to say. Now, there's you just no hope way. he's going to throw it in the stands? No, there's no way. You're talking about the, the triple in the ninth inning? That was fun. It, it, you know, as, a, as an objective fan, I'm not a particularly fan of the Giants or the Royals, but that was a, that was a good moment because it's, there's a guy on third, there's two outs. I, I told my wife, I was like, just watch this. Just, just, just watch. This is two outs, game seven, bottom of the ninth, guy on third. Let's, let's see what happens here. I like Kung Fu Panda, too. He's a free agent. He was three for three in the final game, like, He's going to be looking for a big deal. The team mm -hmm. feels like, you know, we may not want to sign him long term. You know, he's had issues with his weight, but they function as a different team when he's in a lineup. And they've dealt with adversity while they've had a core group of people these past five years that they've won three championships with. You had this guy suspended for PEDs, um, Buster out for injury for the season, mm -hmm. Williams out for the year for injury. So for them to continue to have the success, I'm really impressed. In one hour and five minutes, LeBron James takes the floor for the Cleveland Cavaliers. How about me and you end this podcast and go watch this game? Let's do that. All right. We'll be back. We'll be back. You see, every podcast we put on YouTube comes with this fancy graphic listing all the topics that your favorite Grantland podcasters are talking about. If you click the topics, you can skip around and choose your own podcast adventure. Subscribe to the Grantland Podcast channel to blaze your own trail on this sonic journey.